Hey guys, welcome back to another flashlight review. And today we're going to be looking at this light here. This is the Brunite E18 theme. Nice little EDC18650 flashlight. And it's the first of this brand that I've actually reviewed. And overall, I have to say I'm pretty impressed. Used it for about a week or so now. And in the world of these side switch flashlights, yeah, it's nearly impossible to stand out. There's just so many options out there. But one thing about the E18 is that it comes with a unique design, great build quality, and of course, it comes with a proper regulator driver that's going to provide some constant sustained output. So let's have a look what you get in the box. You know, nothing too fancy here. It doesn't even have the specifications of the light on there. But put that aside, you get an 18650 cell. As well with the light, high drain, 3000 milliamp hour cell. Looks like it's got a integrated, you know, it's got a protection circuit in there, which is a good thing. You've also got a USB-C charger, little lanyard. I don't really use these too often. You've also got a couple of spare O-rings, instruction manual. And you also get this card here, which is basically an extended warranty card. So there's a three-year warranty period as long as you register the light online. Got a little side-by-side -side comparison. We've got the E18 over here to the right. Sofern SC31P. Pretty similar size, all these lights. Workhost TD02. I'd say it's probably closer to the size of the this Convoy S2+. Plus. So it's going to easily fit in your pocket. Here's a little close-up of the E18 theme and the machining as you can see is absolutely top-notch and I'd say it's a step above many of my other lights especially the budget flashlights that I have and I especially like these blue accents they just add a little bit more interest. You've got these cutouts here on the head near to, next to the button that makes the button actually pop out very easily to find in the dark and yeah just this nice kind of knurling as well here they call it polygonal knurling which consists of a series of these tessellating shapes here on the side actually makes it look a bit futuristic and does help with the grip too don't notice any rough edges or inconsistencies in the machining very high quality build and yeah, the anodizing is slightly glossy and smooth, as you can see. It doesn't have that matte black finish that you see on some flashlights. And there's a couple of attachment points as well for the clip. So here at the back and here at the front. I do prefer using the attachment point near to the tail cap just for that deep carry option. And yeah, it's good that they've also included this double sided clip. So it's going to work on a hat, be able to use it as a kind of makeshift headlamp the clip actually came attached to the front part of the light when i got it and oh there is a strong magnet in the tail cap as well so you basically be able to use this as a work light very easily is able to hold the weight of the entire light there is a rubberized button so that's the only button that you get to basically operate the flashlight right here and as you can see there is a little light in the center which indicates the battery level onboard usb-c charging yeah, and I really like how this rubber port is quite low key and concealed. I could barely make out that it was that it was actually there when I first got the light. So under the bezel, it's tricky to see, but there's an SST40 in there with the TIR lens. And the bezel is glued on, so I'm not able to unscrew it. Would it be nice? And I'm sure you could, but it will probably void the warranty if you wanted to do some type of LED swap. And this blue bezel ring as well just adds such a nice finishing touch to the light. As you saw before, the light takes an 18650 cell. It's not compatible with any primary cells like the CR123 or even the 16340 lithium cells. And yeah, again, you get that three-year warranty included with the light. So let me go through the UI. I'm just going to show you what how you basically operate it. So assuming the light is not unlocked, you just basically click it on to press that button once to turn it on and it goes to the last mode that you left it in okay so there's basically five modes okay and you can hold from off to get into that moonlight mode as well so moonlight one two three four yeah so five 
modes in there. Once you've got the light on, you can also triple click to access strobe, triple click from off as well to access strobe. There is also a lock mode. So one, two, three, four, five, and it blinks twice, pretty slow, but then you know it's locked. It doesn't react to anything when the light is locked. So it's kind of difficult to tell whether it's you're just going to have to play around. Sometimes you see some lights, they actually have a little red light there just indicating that it's locked, but yeah, there's no indicator here. All right, so I want to go through some ceiling bounce tests that I ran, and you can see here on the turbo mode, managed to get two minutes of runtime on turbo, which is really impressive for any type of EDC lights. You can see it starts to step down at that two minute mark. By three minutes, you're on about 30% of output in which I ended the test after about 15 minutes. This is a second ceiling bounce test that I ran on high, and you can see the E18 holds that 100% mark all the way through the test, ran it for 60 minutes before I ended. Also ran a bunch of tests with my Opal Light Master Pro, and on the turbo mode, I was really surprised to measure 280 meters of throw. And these figures are based on switch on, but still that's really impressive for such a little light like this and even on the high mode you can see 170 meters of throw and considering that you know the light didn't step down on high you're going to be able to get that consistent 170 meters of throw even if you leave that light on for 60 plus minutes cri was between 63 and 66 so nothing special there this is a light mainly designed for visibility and CCT ranged from 5,400 to 5,700. The E18 produces a surprisingly throwy beam like I mentioned before, and that's due to this TIR lens in there, being able to focus that beam for such a long distance. Though you'll find that you don't really get much spill unless you hit the high merge from about medium onwards. Now some considerations that you need to be aware of. Now the first thing is price. Okay, there are definitely a lot of 18650 flashlights out there. There's a lot of choice and this one does cost, you know, significantly more than the ones that are really available. A lot of those budget 18650 lights especially, but you got to remember as well that the build quality and the driver is of significantly higher quality. So that's what you're paying for at the end of the day. The second consideration is this rubber switch. It would have been nice if Brunite had just included a metal switch. That's my preference because you just get better durability. The charging port is decent, but I also wish that it had come maybe with a thicker kind of rubber port. They've made this one a lot slimmer just so that it can, I guess, a much more lower, low sort of profile. Overall, the E18 is a solid EDC flashlight, and it's hard to make an exciting SST40 flashlight these days, but the overall build quality design, regulated driver, just makes this light worthwhile if you're looking for something that's a step above other 18650 lights. I think a tail switch would really have sealed the deal with me. I'm just, as you know, I love my tail switch lights, but this would really make a great light, great general light around the house, outdoors if you're camping, doing some bush walks, or even just to give away as a gift due to its easy setup and operation. So if you're interested in getting one of these, go ahead and check the link in the description. I've got a special discount code for the E18 that you can check out. If you have questions as well, just let me know down in the comments and I will get back to you. Surely I've missed out on a few things here and there. If you like this video, do me a favor and click the like button. It helps me to get the video out to more people. It's pretty much the only way that my videos get suggested. And if you want to see more flash art reviews and keep up to date with the latest news, make sure you subscribe. Alrighty, I've got the Brunite E18 theme on the highest mode. You notice that there's a really large hotspot in the center. And you do get this with a lot of these TIR lens flashlights of this this sort of type anyway but you, yeah, there are some that have a much more wider profile but i do find most of them produce this sort of beam where there's a lot of light in the center this thing throws a significant distance considering how small it is but yeah, you can see the spill definitely is stronger on these higher modes, but as you go to the lower modes, so I'll just switch over the lat low mode there, 
can't really see much. All you can see is just that middle hot spot and it does light up that tree a little bit. Difficult to tell here in camera, it's more just on the, you know, base of the scene. Okay, second mode, third mode. And this third mode is probably your best bet in terms of really bright sustained output. Okay, this doesn't step down at all. Okay. And then you've got the highest mode here. Able to reach the back of those trees. Illuminate those trees. And also produce a decent amount of spill too. Which I think is important. Especially when you're out in nighttime walks. I mean that third mode, yeah, this third mode is pretty good. Okay, even probably the second mode. One, two. Yeah, the second mode is okay. Like if it's if you're in an area that, that doesn't have too much light, because there is a fair bit of ambient light tonight, the sky is not completely dark. Okay, but on a pitch black sort of night, this is gonna be fine. Up close and personal sort of use. But that third mode, yeah. That's probably your best bet. Now I'll go for a little walk so you can see the beam profile. Alrighty, I've got the E18 theme by Brunite. This is on the lowest mode. Okay, sort of see up into some of those trees, but not really. Second mode, just marginally brighter, but now it becomes more feasible as a walking light. Okay. Third mode, now you're starting to get serious. You can see all the way into the back where those trees are. And the fourth mode, look at that. Pretty good. Alright, I'll go for a bit of a walk so you can see the beam profile.